Welcome to this week's edition of Outdoors Online, a weekly webcast produced by the North Dakota Game and Fish Department. I'm your host, Tom Jensen. Like we did last week, we're going to continue our series of ice fishing previews this week, uh, going east of the river. My guest is B.J. Kratz. B.J. is the fishing supervisor in the southeast district of the state. B.J., based on fishing over the summer, and you do have some really good lakes uh, that get fished quite a bit during the summer, how is that going to transcribe into fishing in the winter? We, uh, this year, got to out and sample a lot of lakes that we hadn't done in years past, and our catches, for the most part, were really, really good, uh, for, for walleyes especially. Um, you know, there's a lot of good opportunities out there. Uh, basically from small lakes up to our traditional walleye waters, you know, like Ashtabula and, and Jamestown Reservoir, and, and pipe stems even coming back a little bit for walleye, so. Pick one of those favorite walleye lakes that you were talking about. Doesn't necessarily have to be your favorite lake. Sure. Tell me how people go about fishing it. Do they look for weed lines? Uh, mm -hmm. Do they fish structure? Well, one of the classic uh, walleye waters in, in, uh, is Barnes County there at Lake Ashtabula. Uh, one of the neat things about that lake is, is it does have the ability to produce really large fish. Uh, probably one of the, the better uh, water bodies in my district that has the potential to produce that trophy size and typically it's a channel thing uh, you find it's a river of course yeah, yeah. yep you, f you find the river channel and, and fish usually use those uh, you know places to travel and uh, upper end is usually better uh, early in the year and as the winter progresses you know fish tend to move downstream yeah so. it being a river now do people have to be cognizant of the ice conditions a little bit more yeah you know we've had a strange kind of a late fall early winter so far <laughs> so things are, are are slow and freezing up but um, in general Ashtabula is fairly fairly safe uh, you have the bridge crossings and so forth that you always have right. to watch out for open water those can be hazardous but uh, it's we haven't had any instances on there so you've got some really nice northern lakes in your uh, in your district pick one do the same thing. Uh, tell me how people go about finding fish, either spearing or, or tip-ups or... Sure. Well, you know, actually over the last several years, our, our northern pike population has been fairly strong. We're probably on the, on the downhill side of things a little bit, you know, mainly because people seem to want walleyes more than anything. But there are still some good northern pike opportunities out there. Uh, again, Ashtabula is a good one in that it has the ability to produce large fish. Um, we've got smaller lakes like... Uh, uh, Kalmbach Lake that has, you know, good opportunities for, for tip-up fishing and so forth. It's not a very deep lake, but you certainly have a good uh, pike population in there. Uh, Jamestown Reservoir has some nice, nice nor northern pike in there. And uh, we've got, uh, like, South Eccleson uh, has traditionally produced northern pike, pretty good northern pike fishing, too, so. I'm going to put you on the spot here. Now, I know you've got a wonderful bunch of perch lakes. Uh, in your district, but what I want to talk about is you've got one of the best crappie lakes in the state in your district. Right. Let's talk about Actually, it. Actually, we have two that are kind of, it depends on what you want to do, both uh, <laughs> Jamestown and Pipe Stem Reservoirs are, are, you know, have excellent crappie populations in them. Numbers, if, if you want numbers, Jamestown is the place to go. We've got uh, uh, one age class really now that's dominant there, a 2011 age class. They're approaching, you know, nine inches or so. Uh, they're growing a little slow because there's a lot of fish there, but, the, mm -hmm. but, but you know, good action. Pipe stem, on the other hand, we've got, you know, one age dom dominant age class there, uh, 2005, and those fish are, you know, 12 to 13 inches. So if you want bigger fish, maybe not quite as many, pipe stem would be the place to go, and, and uh, Jamestown would have the, the, the constant action. All right. If I were going there for the first time, how would I go about finding fish if, well, if I'm going in just blind? Typically, crappies are species that like open water. They like to suspend, uh, often relating to the river channel. They, they, you know, they'll be four to ten feet off the bottom. Uh, you, you almost need electronics to be, at least to find them, and it never hurts either when you're fishing to be able to coax them into to biting and so forth. But uh, the river channel is a good place to be, uh, you know, off the edges and so forth. And they are a fish of, of the flats in a way too. They don't relate to structure as much as your pike and, and walleyes do, so. All right, it's great advice. Thanks, BJ. You bet, thank you. Paul Bailey joins us now. Paul is the fishery supervisor for the South Central District. Paul, you've got some really rich resources in your district if summer and fall fishing are any indication. How would you characterize the prospects for this winter? Well, I guess if you look at what our 
how things went this summer, uh, that's usually a good indicator of how things are going to go ice fishing wise. And if you look at that, I guess you can say these are the good old days of fishing in South Central North Dakota right now. I don't think we've ever had more uh, quality fisheries on the landscape than we do right now. Yeah, and you have a lot of them that are just dotting all over 10 or 15 or 20 lakes with within small communities. Exactly, yeah, are. especially you get into northern Kidder County, there's definitely a, a cluster of lakes up there that uh, receive a lot of attention from, you know, in that Wing, Tuttle, Robinson, Pettibone area, and then also in the southern part of our, our district, the that uh, Ashley, Lair, Wishick area. Uh, sure. Definitely have a concentration of lakes down there and some other ones scattered around too. Pick one lake in your district, uh, say one of your best walleye lakes, uh, tell me where it is, first of all, and tell me how anglers find fish on that lake. Uh, I guess it's hard to pass up Dry Lake down by Ashley. It's been such a consistent walleye producer for you know, over 15 years now. So uh, it's a big body of water, so one of the keys to finding walleye is always being mobile uh, and starting out maybe targeting those 10 to 15 feet uh, depths and uh, see what happens. If you're not catching fish, move. But, uh, you know, those sunrise, sunset times always seem to be the peak for walleye. So try and get yourself in a good spot, uh, especially for the sunset bite. Get away from some of the crowds, I would guess. Yeah, uh, finding a spot to your own is always, I guess, what a lot <laughs> of anglers are searching for. If you can avoid the crowds, great. But uh, other times, uh, you know, at least knowing where the crowds are and maybe what kind of depths they're targeting uh, can give you some good pointers, too, on where you should be fishing. All right, pick out a northern lake for me where people could go to either spear or tip up fish, live bait fish. Yeah, uh, Baumgartner Lake could be a good one to target uh, for our pike anglers. It's been, it's produced well for some of our spear fishermen. It, uh, the last few winters it's had reasonably good water clarity, which is what spears are, are certainly looking for, and then good numbers of pike, too. So uh, you hopefully can see a few fish during the day if you're spearing, and then uh, you just scatter some tip-ups out. Uh, hopefully you'll encounter a few pike, too. Most of the guys I've asked them about panfish, and they'll pick one particular panfish lake, but your district, you have a whole pile full of really good panfish lakes and maybe heed your own advice and, and stay mobile. Right, exactly. I think that's going to be one of the keys to finding perch. Uh, a lot of times in our netting surveys, we'll see lakes that have outstanding numbers and sizes of perch in them, but for whatever reason, they really won't cooperate with anglers. And in other cases, you see lakes that might have more mediocre perch populations in them, but some of those lakes, they just turn on for whatever reason, and anglers are able to get on top of those fish. So it's hard to single out at this time of year, you know, early in the ice fishing season, where the hot perch bites are going to be. Uh, so I guess the best advice I'd give is to head to some of those areas where we've got those concentrations of lakes, a number of lakes to pick from, uh, in that northern Kidder County area or Logan McIntosh counties, where you've got a lot of lakes to pick from in a small area, and just be mobile. You know, within a body of water, if you suspect there's good perch numbers there, keep moving around, maybe you'll find them. And if you're not finding them there, you can drive a few miles, be on another lake, and, and give it a try. <laughs> it's a great luxury to have. Good advice. Yeah. Thanks, Paul. Thank you. Our last report this week comes from Randy Hiltner. Randy manages the Northeast Fishing District. Randy, Devil's Lake is in your district, of course. Great lake, but you've got some other real gems in your district, too. Yeah, not very far away. Uh, Stump Lake, for instance, is connected to Devil's Lake, and that has a real nice walleye perch fishery right now. What I want you to do, as I've asked everybody else, pick your favorite walleye lake. I can imagine what it's going to be. Tell me uh, how most anglers fish it, how they go and find fish. Do they fish structure? Do they fish weed lines? I know there's a lot of area on Devil's, and there's a lot of different ways to fish it, but during the winter, it's a different story. True, but you can catch a walleye out in 25 feet of water just as easy as four feet of water. It's not like they're all at the same depth. So I like to use jigging spoons and a half a minnow and, and stay fairly shallow. And uh, if you're looking for a little smaller fish, then I go out deeper. What do you mean by fairly shallow? Well, sh uh, shallow. Four, four feet, eight feet? Uh, yeah, you could fish anywhere from, you know, shallow to me is anything under 20 feet. Mm -hmm. Do you get up into the trees then? Uh, you sure can, but it's, you know, that's not the only place you find fish out there. All right. Uh, I know you've got some great northern lakes in your district, too. Tell me about one of those and how you go about fishing that. Well, it's, it's, hard, it's hard to beat uh, the upper basin of Devil's Lake. We have uh, Lake Irving, and we've got uh, now Lake Ellis, which is attached to Lake Irving, uh, is open for ice fishing, too. So there's a that's, ton of course, of one of the new refuges that's, that's open this yes, year. Yes, that's a federal wildlife refuge, and it, it's open to ice fishing for the first time this year, and there's tons of northerns up in that complex. 
But also like a Lake Loretta is, is a very good northern fishing lake and it's a good setup for tip ups. Uh, and if the clarity is good, you can spear some really nice fish there as well. All right. You've got some real nice panfish lakes there too. How do f people fish those? Well, if, if we're talking about perch, uh, there are some nice uh, smaller perch lakes besides uh, Devil's Lake and Stump Lake. Uh, down in Silver Lake in Wells County and Silver Lake WMA, are, there's some nice perch down there. And of course, it's hard to beat jigs and uh, you know, having a dead stick with a slip bobber and a minnow. Yeah. I know uh, most people like to follow the crowds when they're perch fishing. There's something to be said, though, for kind of getting away and, and finding your own spots. Well, that's true. I mean, if you want to share fish, then you can fish right next to someone. <laughs> if you want them for yourself, maybe you want to move away. All right. Thanks, Randy. The North Dakota Game and Fish website is full of useful information to aid in your ice fishing efforts this year. There are topographical maps of nearly every lake in the state. They'll show you points and drop-offs, deep spots or shallow spots, and likely looking places that might hold fish. There are also descriptions of each lake that will tell you if the lake contains fish and even what species. And if there's an access point on the lake, you can even access the department's fish stocking reports from previous years to see if a lake has a population of fish you might be interested in pursuing. Access the Game and Fish website at gf.nd.gov and follow the links to your favorite page. For BJ, Paul, Randy, and the rest of the staff here at North Dakota Game and Fish, thanks for joining us for Outdoors Online. We'll see you again next week.